It's the question I've been getting all week. What is a bomb cyclone? Okay, that might be just a little overdramatic. Well, the short answer is you just lived through one this week. But the longer answer is actually multifaceted because we didn't just get hit with a bomb cyclone, we also got hit with an atmospheric river. So let's break them both down. The first thing to note is that every low pressure system is technically a cyclone. The original Greek word cyclos means circle or coil, and you can see that motion clearly when a low pressure system is in our area. Low pressure systems spin counterclockwise or cyclonic motion, whereas high pressure spins in a clockwise motion and could be called an anticyclone. In The Wizard of Oz, there's the famous cyclone scene, which is confusing because most of us would look at it and say, isn't that a tornado? And you'd be right. To make things even more confusing, a cyclone is also the name used for what we call hurricanes in the Indian Ocean and near Australia. And to add even more to the confusion, cyclones, or what we call hurricanes, are called typhoons in the western Pacific Ocean. But specifically, a bomb cyclone comes from bombogenesis, which translates into a fall of pressure of 24 millibars in 24 hours. But this one fell 63 millibars in 24 hours, making it even more… bombish? So what's a millibar? Well, let's save that for another time. The bottom line is that a bomb cyclone is a rapidly intensifying storm, typically caused by a head-on collision of cold air from the north and warm air from the south. And that is where the atmospheric river comes in. An atmospheric river basically is a kind of highway in the sky. It's packing water vapor that can transport up to 15 times the amount of water that flows through the mouth of the Mississippi River. So this week we got hit by a bomb cyclone that often packs heavy winds and an atmospheric river that brought tons of rain and snow to the entire west coast. Now since this week's bomb cyclone had two elements that helped intensify it, it made me think of the most famous bomb cyclone that actually had three elements that intensified its impacts. It was known as the Perfect Storm of 1991 and it was so massive that Hollywood immortalized it on film in 2000. It caused over $200 million in damage or what would be close to a half billion dollars today. Now, as I mentioned, that storm had three elements that intensified its effects. A cold front from Canada combined with high pressure over the Atlantic and the remnants of Hurricane Grace all collided at once. George Clooney and his crew were never heard from again. Okay, that's not true, but the actual crew of the 72-foot commercial fishing vessel, the Andrea Gale, were all lost at sea. So there you have it. The bomb cyclone and atmospheric river we encountered definitely made things wild outside, but just wait until we get a polar vortex. So what's a polar vortex? Well, let's wait for winter on that one, because despite all the snow, it's still technically fall. And what kind of storm story would this be if I didn't leave you with one final thing that I didn't know? While this week's bomb cyclone was one of the deepest storms in West Coast history, it could have been much worse. In a somewhat rare move, the storm defied normal convention and instead of continuing to the east, retrograded and died offshore to the west, sparing us from what could have been much more significant impacts. For Central Oregon Daily News, I'm weather dork Scott Elmas.